If you've recently logged into Flipgrid, you've probably noticed that they've made some significant changes to their interface. Luckily, all of the great features of Flipgrid are still there. They've even added some content upgrades and they've made some changes to the student camera that make it more dynamic and even more powerful to use. But one of the changes that I know is throwing people off is the fact that they no longer have grids and now there's a discussion tab with a topics tab and a groups tab. I'll be making a few videos about the updates to Flipgrid that came out in August of 2020, but in this video, I'll focus on how to use the new system of topics and groups in order to assign students work. Although it's a little bit confusing to have to learn a new system, this new way of assigning assignments through Flipgrid is better than the old way, and in this video, I'm going to show you why. My name is Sam Carey, and this is my YouTube channel for the New Ed Tech Classroom. Before we get started talking about how to assign assignments, one thing that I want to point out, because a lot of people have been talking about it, is the fact that there's no longer a Disco Library. Disco Library used to be the name of the place where you could go find pre-created lessons in Flipgrid. Pre-created lessons are still here. They're just now under a tab called Discovery. And if you click on that Discovery tab, you'll also see some of the new content integrations that Flipgrid has. So for example, they now have an integration with Minecraft EDU. All right, now we're back on the teacher dashboard. And the main thing you'll notice about this new interface if you're a previous Flipgrid user is that grids have gone away. When you first log in, it's going to take you to this discussion tab. Then you'll notice that there are two sub tabs called groups and topics. If you previously had a Flipgrid account and had already created grids, those grids will now be listed as groups. If you click on the topics tab, you'll also see any topics that you had created under that tab as well. So everything is still there. What exactly has changed? The way the old Flipgrid used to work is that you had to create a grid first. A grid was usually a way of setting up a class. Then once you had that grid set up, you could create topics, which were essentially assignments, and then assign those to your grid. You could duplicate topics over to other grids as well, but the topics never existed outside of a grid. They were always part of a class that you created. So really the only thing that Flipgrid has done here is just separate topics from grids. And instead of grids, they now call them groups. So now we have a separate place to create assignments and a separate place to create groups. The benefit of this is that now you can create an assignment that is not necessarily affiliated with a group of students. This has clear benefit if you plan to use an assignment over and over again year after year, but it also makes it just a little bit easier to use Flipgrid to set up small group work. So let me show you how that would work. And to make it simple, let's start from an account that doesn't have any topics or groups already created. First, go to the Topics tab, and then when you're there, click Add a Topic. I'm going to set this up to be a small group assignment. I'll give it a name like Demo Group Assignment, and then I'm also going to write instructions for the members of that group. So for this assignment, I'm going to have students watch a video that presents something that's a little bit controversial. Then they'll record a video to state their opinion about what they just watched. Then after students have recorded their own video, they'll start watching the videos of their group mates and responding to their answers using some sentence starters. So it's almost like a live group discussion, except it's going to happen in a slightly asynchronous way because students will have to wait for their peers' videos to be posted. You'll still be able to change the duration of a student's video response, and you can also choose whether or not you want to moderate responses so that you would have to see them before they get posted live. Then I'm going to scroll down here to media so that I can find a prompt that students are going to respond to. I'll select the YouTube option here, and I'll put in a link for a video about whether or not cell phones should be allowed in schools. Down in the access control, you're going to be determining who will be able to have access to this topic. Since we haven't set up groups yet, what I would recommend you do is just enter the email domain of your school so that you know that only students with that school email domain can get in. You don't ever have to put individual students' emails. It can be a way to make those videos more secure. But even if you plan to do that, don't do that here. Go ahead and wait until you actually set up a group. And if you wanted to create a public topic, say to use this for professional development or another reason like that, you could also choose for this to be a public topic, and then users would just need any Gmail or Microsoft email to get in. 
Once you're ready to create the topic, click that create a topic button. And there you'll see that the topic or assignment has been created. Now, right now, this topic has not been assigned to any group of students. So if you were to go up here to the drop down menu and then try to assign this topic to a group, it's just going to prompt you to create a group. You can do that directly from here, but I'm going to go back to the discussion tab to show you how you would do it from there instead. And the reason why I want to start from here on the discussion tab is just so that you can envision how you could also set up your classes or small groups of students right here on the groups page as well. So to start, I'll go over here to the blue create a group button. I'll give my group a name. I'm going to start with my overall class name, English language arts. And then I'm also going to give this a group number. And again, what I'm showing you here is how to use this to create small groups, but you could just as easily set this up to be your entire class as well. You'll want to do the same thing you did when you added a topic and set this up so that only students coming from your specific school's email domain are able to access the group. And similar to the topic, you could also choose to make this group public if you wanted to do that as well. After you click next, you'll see that it prompts you to duplicate topics to that group. So if you click on the drop down menu, you'll see any of the topics that you created. You can select it and then click duplicate topic. And just to clarify here, it's not required for you to assign a topic to this group. So if all you wanted to do was create the group first and you didn't necessarily want to assign a topic, you could also click skip for now. But I'm going to go ahead here and click duplicate topics. And then you'll see that it's going to pop up a box with a link that I can share directly to students so that when they sign in, they'll be taken directly to their group. And now that we're in that group, we can also see that the topic has been assigned to that group as well. Now, since I'm setting up small groups of say four to five students, I'm obviously going to need to create more of them. So what I'll do here is go up to the actions dropdown menu, and then I'll select duplicate group. Once you choose to duplicate the group, you'll see that it creates a new group with exactly the same name, except it'll say duplicate in front of it. So to fix that, just go back to the actions dropdown menu, select edit group, and that will allow you to change the group's name so that it doesn't have duplicate in front of it. And you can also change the number of the group as well. So I'll go here and create group number two. And now all I'm going to do is just continue to repeat that process over and over again to create as many groups as I want to make. So now back on the groups tab, you'll see that we have created three different groups. And then since we duplicated the group, when you click on the group, you'll see that that assignment has also been duplicated over to the group as well. Know that if you do this and students have already responded with videos, it's not going to copy the student videos over to the new group. It will only copy that assignment over. Then when you click on the topics tab, you'll also see that the topic has been duplicated and that it's been assigned to each group. Since we're not going to be duplicating groups over and over, you'll also need to know how to do this the other way around. So let's say that you already have groups created and you want to create a new topic and duplicate that topic to multiple groups. You'll want to select add to group, then you'll be able to choose one group to assign that topic to. Pick the group, click add, and now if you want to assign that topic to the rest of the groups, go to the drop down menu, select duplicate topic, and then you can pick all the groups that you want to duplicate that topic over to. All right, so since our intention with this assignment is just to have a small group of students be able to communicate with each other about a topic, I only want to give the students who are going to be in that small group access to the group and to that assignment. So the first thing that you're going to want to do here is click on the blue share button. That's going to give you a unique link that students would click on in order to access that group. And what I'm going to show you here is a way you could do this through Google Classroom, but you can do it with other learning management systems as well. So now that I'm in Google Classroom in the assignment editor, I'll create an assignment and I'll copy and paste that specific group link. Then I'll go to the drop down menu where it says all students. And then I'm just going to select from that list the students that I want to be in that small group. I'll have to repeat that process for all the groups that I've made. And although you'll have multiple assignments on your teacher end, when students log in, they'll only see the assignment that was assigned specifically to them. And then when they click on the link, it will take them directly to that group and they'll be able to complete their assignment. I hope this video helped you understand just a little bit better how to use the new Flipgrid 
to assign assignments to students. You can set up those groups to be either small groups of students like I showed in this video, or of course, you could just set up those groups to be whole classes. And as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm also going to make a couple of other videos about some of the new features in Flipgrid. One of those will be about the camera updates. And then I'll also talk about how you can use that camera as a teacher in order to make short instructional videos. If you have any questions, thoughts, or ideas, please put them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching my video to the end. If you found the tips that I shared helpful, please share it with other teachers that you know, hit the like button, and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of my weekly updates. You can also check out some of the other tutorials I have on my channel by clicking on one of those two videos above. And if you're interested in downloading any of the resources that I've created and show on my videos, please visit my website at www.newedtechclassroom.com. Lastly, if you want to check me out on social media, my Twitter handle, Facebook page, and Pinterest account are all in the description below. Thanks so much and have a great week.